Hi, and welcome to Meetings in Math. You are here for section 8.2, Volume of Cones. Our essential question is, how is the volume of a cone related to the volume of a cylinder? Today, you will need your Jaguar dots on section 8.2, a pen or a pencil, you may find a highlighter helpful, a calculator to keep our calculations moving along, some creativity, some bright ideas, and always bring your problem solving skills. We need to begin today looking at a cone and giving some parts, some definitions. To begin with, let's talk about the height of a cone. So the height of a cone is from the center to the top where the lateral sides come together. And here at the bottom, this here has to meet at a right angle. So sometimes you'll see the height like this with this dotted line and they'll call that the height. And other times you will see it on the outside where they will call it the height where it just looks like a measurement on the outside. And then you also have the radius on a cone and that goes from the center of the circle out to the outside edge of a circle. Sometimes though, you'll see an arrow that comes on the outside of the circle and that is the base area and we denote it with a capital B. So be careful where you're looking at that arrow. If the arrow is touching a line, it's talking about the radius. If it's not touching the line and it's touching the outside part of the circle, that right there, that's talking about the base area. So cones and cylinders. We actually use the idea of a cylinder to help us get ready to talk about the volume of a cone. And so imagine a cylinder that fits perfectly inside of a cone. That means that the base area is exactly the same and the height is exactly the same. So they have the same radius and they have the same height. And the question is how many cones fit into it? Well, believe it or not, three cones fit into one cylinder. So if we know that the volume of a cylinder is base area times height, then we know that the volume of a cone is one third of that. So the volume of a cone is one third the base area times the height. So we're going to use that now to find the volume of cones. So on the first one, it is listed out and there's just bits and pieces that you're going to fill in as we go. And then as we move on, you'll actually have some examples where we remove that and you have to do it by yourself. The big thing though, whenever we start, is that we always begin by writing out our formulas. We wanna free up our brain for the problem solving and the calculations and all the hard work by writing down those parts that have been memorized. So we start by beginning to write down the formula. And the formula in this case is V equals one third base area times the height. And then what the second thing we wanna do is we want to go ahead and write down all of the variables that we are in our formula. And we go ahead and write down V, even though that's what we are looking for, because sometimes we'll be given the volume and be looking for other things. By doing this, it allows us to laser focus in what it is that we're looking for. For example, I now know that I need the base area and I need the height to move on. Right in here, find the volume of the cone with a diameter of six feet and a height of three feet and round to the nearest hundredth. So right here, I see that I have a height of three feet right there. I can put it onto my diagram and I can fill it in here. This helps me get ready for my problem. And then I notice that I need the base area. Now nothing here tells me the base area. Nothing here tells me the base area, which means I need to go do a smaller sub problem. So this is my big idea problem, but I need to come over here and do a smaller sub problem. And in the same way that it, I wrote down my formula for my large problem, I'm going to write down my formula for my small problem as well for the exact same reasons to free up my brain for looking for information. So I know that I need to find the radius, but I was only given the diameter of six feet. Diameter goes edge to edge. And what I need is from center to edge. But if my diameter is six feet, then my radius is three feet. So I'm going to substitute that in to base area. So instead of A for area equals pi r squared, I'm using B to stand in for base area. So base area is equal to pi r squared. So r is three. I'm going to use three here. Three squared is nine. So we're going to just call this nine pi for right now. 
We're going to use 9pi for as long as we can because it's going to keep my calculations simpler. Rather than dragging this decimal through, I can hopefully get things to reduce. So I'll take my b, now that I know it's 9pi, and I'll bring it back up here. And now, because I only have one unknown, I have enough that I can substitute it in. So I have one third of nine pi times three. So I'm gonna take one third of nine pi. This is why I left it as pi, is one third of nine is three. And so this here will be three pi, and this three just dropped down. So now I have three times three, which is nine. And so I could call this nine feet cubed but it's said to go to the nearest hundredth, so I'm not actually done. This is in terms of pi, so I need to finish this. So I know that pi is equal to 3.14, so I'm gonna substitute that in as 3.14, and nine times 3.14 is 28.26 feet cubed. Nearest hundredth with the th is two decimal places, so I need to make sure I do that. So in doing problems like this, we start off with our big idea, and if we notice we need something, we can break off and go do a smaller idea and then come back to our bigger idea. And so what we do is we just chip away at a larger problem by going and doing smaller pieces and then coming back when we need to. Example two, find the height of a cone with a radius of six yards and a volume of 75 cubic yards to the nearest whole number. So when I look at this problem, I'm already feeling a little like, this isn't normal. This one's saying find the height, not find the volume. And this is exactly why we begin by writing the formula. When we write the formula, that frees up our brain for that problem solving. And I notice it's saying it has certain things that are in here. So I write volume equals one third base area times height. Remember to use the capital B, not the lowercase b. Capital B means base area. Lowercase b means like base, like the length on a rectangle or something like that. So now that I've done that, I write out my variables and then we find the ones that we have. So it does say it has the volume. So I'm actually going to put 75 for the volume. And it says find the height. So in, I know that this height is gonna be left blank. And so I'm actually going to put that right there for the height just to remind me of that. Which means I need to go find this base area. So I'm gonna write that formula down and I'm gonna go find pieces as I can. I found that the radius is six yards. So if that's six yards, that means radius is six and I'm gonna substitute it in. So six squared is 36, but we don't write pi 36, we write 36 pi. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring that back to my main problem. So now it's going to look a little bit different than it did before. This time, instead of just a strict calculation, I'm gonna to have to do some solving and figure this out. So I know that V is 75, so I'm gonna go ahead and substitute that in. And I know that B is 36 pi, so I'll substitute that in. And H, H is what I'm looking for. So it's going to stay H. So 75 is gonna stay 75. One third of 36 though, I know that. 1 third is 36, that's 12. Pi is going to stay pi. So far, so good. So H is what we're trying to get alone. So this is just a number. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to go and divide by that number, 12 pi. So 12 pi divided by 12 pi is one. And then I have this mess. It really is a mess. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my 12 pi and turn it into the decimal that it is. So 12 times 3.14 is about 37.68. And do you see how I went from an equal sign to approximate? That's because now we're into eh, waters. So 75 divided by 37.68 is about two yards. So our height is about two yards. Why is it not yards squared? Because we're talking about a linear length, like what a yardstick measures. So the yardsticks are just regular yards. So this would be about two yards. What I would love for you to do is to explain to somebody why the volume of a cone is one third the volume of a cylinder. 
bonus points if you can find a video on YouTube that actually shows you why. It's really cool if you could find one. Thank you so much for joining us today and I can't wait to see you in our next lesson. Remember, be kind to one another because we can all use some extra kindness in our lives. Bye for now.